Hello, I am going to read The Very Best Pumpkin, written by Mark Kimball Moulton, illustrated by Karen Hillard Good. And I just love the sweet illustrations in this book. And when we are done, I'm going to show you how to draw a pumpkin, just like that one. Down a winding country lane and over a rolling hill, you'll find Pumpkin Hollow Farm, where a young boy named Peter lives with his grandparents, Mimi and Papa. In the spring, they grow plump, juicy strawberries, and in the summer, corn crisp and sweet as honey. But it's in the fall that Mimi and Papa's farm produce the most wonderful crop of all. Yum. <gasps> pumpkins, big pumpkins, small pumpkins, short pumpkins, tall pumpkins. They grow pumpkins of every shape and size. One summer, not so long ago, as Peter was tending his pumpkins, he spotted a long curly Q vine he hadn't noticed before. It twisted and traveled all the way beyond the far edge of the field. Curious, Peter followed where it went. Here it goes. What do you think will be at the end of it? Cautiously, he clambered over pumpkin after pumpkin as he trailed the vine into the nearby meadow. And at the vine's very end, much to Peter's surprise, he discovered a tiny pumpkin growing all by itself among the weeds. Poor little pumpkin, thought Peter. It's awfully lonely out here. Carefully, Peter cleared the weeds so the pumpkin could enjoy some sunshine. Then he loosened the soil around the plant and gave it some water. Every day that followed, when Peter had finished tending all the other pumpkins that grew side by side in the field, he hurried out to the meadow to visit his lonely little pumpkin. Caution, pumpkin growing. Peter was so busy that summer, he didn't notice that a new family had moved in next door to Mimi and Papa's farm. Peter's new neighbor, Meg, spent most of her time alone, reading under a tree at the far edge of her yard. The Secret Garden. One afternoon, as Meg was reading, she heard a noise in the meadow next door. She peeked around just in time to see Peter as he bent to care for his special pumpkin. Day after day, Meg quietly watched, and little by little, Peter's pumpkin grew. It grew larger and larger and rounder and plumper and began to change color from pale yellow to dark green and finally to a deep, rich orange red that glowed in the late summer sun. It was the most beautiful pumpkin Meg had ever seen. Soon the leaves began to change and the days grew shorter and cooler. Folks began to arrive at Mimi and Papa's farm to select their pumpkins. Peter helped his teacher, Mrs. Clark, choose a pretty little pumpkin for her desk at school. Peter proudly showed Officer Bailey a big pumpkin in the middle of the field. It would look dandy on the steps of the police station in town. Miss Jane, the librarian, thanked Peter after he helped her pick just the right pumpkins for her award-winning pies. Peter helped pumpkin after pumpkin find a good home, but he was saving one pumpkin. Hay rides, taffy apples, corn mazes. Look at that, that little scarecrow. His special pumpkin, the best pumpkin of all. Late one afternoon, Meg and her parents came by the farm to pick their pumpkin. Peter watched as Meg stepped gingerly into the field and began to search. She peeked under giant leaves and crawled over rambling vines and carefully stepped between pumpkin after pumpkin, but she couldn't seem to find just the right one. Meg looked here and there. She looked everywhere. Just as she was about to leave, someone stepped up behind her. I think I kn might know where to look at, Peter said. Peter guided Meg past all the pumpkins in the field until they came upon the wandering vine. Follow me, he said. They followed the vine to the meadow where Peter's pumpkin grew. This one's the very best pumpkin, said Peter. Oh, it's beautiful, Meg cried. Meg shyly told Peter how she'd been there all along watching him care for his pumpkin. I knew you were there, Peter confessed. That's why I'd like you to have it. Together, Meg and Peter carried their special pumpkin across the field to show Meg's parents. That was so nice he gave that pumpkin to her. Autumn turned into winter and winter into spring. Soon it was summer once again and Peter was busy tending a new crop of pumpkins side by side with his new friend Meg. 
Every day they cleared the weeds and tilled the soil and watered the field. And just like, just like the pumpkins, their friendship grew and grew and grew. Oh, Peter's Guide to Growing Your Own Very Best Pumpkin. So he gives some directions if you want to freeze on that. So I'm going to go back to one of our pumpkin pictures here. I think we'll do this big, the big pumpkin picture. And I'm going to show you how to draw this pumpkin. Now I want you to remember something. Not all pumpkins are perfectly round just like this. Some pumpkins are tall, some are dented, some are short and squishy. So we are going to make a pumpkin like this, but I encourage you to draw it and um, not worry about it being perfect. And we've got to add these fun vines too. And I think the stem of the pumpkin, we'll look at another picture. I think there's one that shows the stem, but we'll start with this. Okay, so here's how I start this pumpkin. I'm actually gonna look at this middle shape and doesn't it look like an oval? So I'm gonna turn my paper this way. I'm gonna start with an oval in the middle, not looking for perfect. Then I'm gonna build each one of these sections. So I'm gonna start kind of near the top on the right side and I'm gonna go down and around. It almost looks like a backwards letter C, right? So I'm gonna go over and down and around just like that. And I'm gonna do it one more time down and around. And then on this side, I'm gonna go backwards. So there's my letter C, boop, and I'm gonna do it again. Now, I wanna show you, I'm gonna draw a few others over here, just so you get the idea that your pumpkin can look different. So there's one that's a little bit, a short and plumper pumpkin. And then here, I'm gonna start with a skinnier oval and I'm gonna make this pumpkin a tall and skinny one. So you can do it in different ways. It doesn't have to look like this. So then for your stem, I'll show you a couple different ways to do this. One is you can think about the number nine. I'm gonna make this one loop-de-loop. -loop. So I'm gonna start a little bit to the left and I'm gonna go up and curve around like the number nine. Then I'm gonna jump down from the bottom of the nine and I'm basically gonna follow this back but I'm gonna end up over here. So I'm gonna go a little bit low because the vine gets thinner as it goes and then thicker for the stem. So see that, how it twirled around? Then this part of the vine would keep going, right? And you can keep looping it. So if you wanna just end it, you can end it. If you wanna loop it, here's what you can do. You could go around again and make that loop, go around again, stop, and there you go. And then maybe I'm gonna go like that and just make it thin out just like that. Now this pumpkin stem I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to go up on the side and go up, up on the side and go up. Looks like a tree trunk, doesn't it? And then right at the top I'm going to connect it with a smile and then connect that with a hill so I can see the top. And you can put the lines, see how there's lines in the stem? And here they have it almost going off the edge. So you could have some of those twisting around if you want to have some lines in the stem. And now this one, I'm gonna twist it going the other way. So instead of a nine, it's gonna look more like a P. So I'm gonna go across like this and go like that. And if I wanna look at, let's see, this page. I love these little vines too, how they have kind of these loop-de-loops, these little spirals. So you could add some of those and look how they have some parts that are thick. I might add those in as well, some little thick parts and maybe one here. And that's just making a little thick parts around there. Okay, and then I might make this stem kind of finish like that. So there are some different versions, but you can just do one, but I want you to see that they all look different. And if you wanna add a leaf in there, what shape does that look like to you? I'm gonna turn it around so you can see real quick. It reminds me of a heart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a long vine here. I'm even gonna flip my paper over and I'm gonna make, oop, I guess I want you to do it the other way. <laughs> There's my heart shape. And you know what? I'll just add a little vine going from there. And then maybe I'll have one coming up here. 
that looks like this. So there's my leaf shape, and then I can add the little veins. And those just look like little lines coming out. So you could definitely add more detail. And I love all the things in this book, how they really fill it up with lots of wonderful things, like here's a little bee. That's cute with the little wings on top. And then they did a swirly line. I'm gonna make a dashed line. So it's a little bit different than my vines. And do you see how the hill goes behind the pumpkin and it's not right on the bottom? So I'm gonna make a hill and I'm gonna imagine I jump over the pumpkin, connect it, jump over the pumpkin, connect it, jump over the pumpkin and connect it. And there's my little hill. And here's a beautiful place down here. I could do more vines. I could look through the book. You can always look through the pages and pause it. Maybe you'll wanna put a leaf or a ladybug. Let's look at our other pumpkin patch here. Look at this. See how the stem, some of them are bent. That one's great. Maybe you could add a little mouse hiding in there or some more whirly twirly. So there's lots of things you could do to fill up your pumpkin patch picture. I might even have a pumpkin coming off the edge down here. What if I did this and I had a little pumpkin coming off the bottom here? And I think I'm gonna do that crooked. I like that crooked little stem. And I think I'll add some more vines. And I like when the vines are a little thick so that I can color them in. And I'm gonna add some more of my leaves and my little veins and my leaf. So I'm really filling it in. I think it needs something here and I think a mouse might do it. I'm gonna draw a little mouse hiding behind a pumpkin. So if you wanna stop, you can stop and start drawing or you can watch as I draw my little pumpkin here. So I'm gonna draw a pumpkin. And then for my mouse, or let me get my stem first. Shoop. For my mouse, I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna make a line that goes straight and then curve under. And then do another little line going down, little eye. And the ear loops around like this. Baby line in there, curve line. Gotta add a nice little nose and the ear behind there. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna add some more detail and then color very carefully. Good luck on your pumpkin patch picture.